So now, Mr. Irving, I will ask you to explain why, if, as you claim, there were no gas chambers in Auschwitz, the gratings taken in 1945 by the Polish authorities from Morgue 1 in Crematorium 2 were covered in cyanide. And why the camp's chief architect, Karl Bischoff, specifically refers to Morgue 1 as a Vergassungskeller, a gassing cellar. Well? I am willing to concede that they did indeed find in the ventilator gratings traces of cyanide. They did? Yes. I will also concede that it was indeed used as a gassing cell. It was? Yes. Good. So, gassing what? Well, I think the evidence is clear that the room was used as a gassing cellar for fumigating cadavers. Fumigating cadavers? Yes. Why exactly do you say that? Well, that is what mortuaries are for. In mortuaries, you put cadavers. What is the evidence that that room was used for gassing corpses? That is what it was built for. I, I'm sorry, this seems a crude question, but what is the point of gassing a corpse? Because, my lord, they came in heavily infested with the typhus-sparing lice which had killed them. Did they? Did they, Mr. Irving? Did they indeed? Then please explain to me why they needed a gas-proof door with a peephole with double eight millimeter glass and a metal grill on the inside. You will remember at this time, most of Germany was under the weight of Royal Air Force Bomber Command. There was a concern about the need to build bomb-tight shelters. Oh, so, so now it's an air raid shelter, is it? I beg your pardon? It, it is either a room for gassing already dead corpses, or it's an air raid shelter. Did I say either or? In early 1943, an air raid shelter? When you know perfectly well that the first bombing raid near Auschwitz wasn't until late 1944. And the placing of this so-called air raid shelter, if it was for the SS. It was a terribly long way from the SS barracks, wasn't it? Have you thought of that? That's two and a half miles, isn't it? If there was a bombing raid, they'd all be dead before they got there. But can you really see lots of very heavily armed men running the two and a half to three miles from the SS barracks to a cellar at the far end of Birkenau? You see, I'm trying to understand if there was this, this dual function, so see if you can help me. Now, if the corpses were also gassed there, then as I understand it, they were then sent to be incinerated. Yes. What is the point in gassing a corpse that is about to be burnt? I'm not sure saying this off the top of my head, Mr. Rampton. I, I'm not a Holocaust historian. I'm a, I'm a Hitler historian. Then why don't you keep your mouth shut about the Holocaust? The truth is, as usual, Mr. Irving, you jump in off the board spouting whatever rubbish comes into your head in order to avoid the obvious conclusion. This is not because you're a rotten historian. It's because you're a bent one as well. <laughs> 